This video is my attempt at recreating the mythological double cheese whammy, originating from my hometown hoagie shop, Shorty Nokis. From the homemade hoagie roll to the secret oil, I hope this recipe brings you some valley nostalgia. I've been reviewing actual whammy photos, conducting blind taste tests, and grilling my best friend whose first job was at Noki's. My final conclusion is, no one truly knows the exact recipe. In fact, the only thing most people seem to agree on is that the owner mixed his secret oil alone in a locked room. Shorty Noki's was in business from 1956 to 2020. It always evolved with the times and was much more than just a hoagie shop. It was a main hang for local teens. But mention shorties to anyone from the valley and their first reaction is something like this. One last thing before I get started, I did a lot of experiments and I tried to come up with a recipe that anyone can make at home from scratch. Okay, let's go. Dinah's not really in our kitchen, but the freshest locally grown foods are. We use only grade A meats from ground chuck to Polish hams and bake our own rolls fresh every day. A hoagie from Noki's is a sandwich and a half. 35 years ago, Shorty created his special oil topping. That same secret recipe still makes our hoagies the best tasting in the valley. Shorty Noki's. Bring in the kids. We're all family here, so relax and enjoy our own cooking. Shorty Noki's Hoagie Stand, the home of the double cheese whammy. Don't tell me you didn't love your whammy if you used yesterday's roll from a grocery store. A fresh roll matters if your goal is maximum nostalgia. This is what you'll need. One cup of warm milk, two teaspoons of instant yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, one half tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of melted butter, two tablespoons of olive oil, and two cups of bread flour. This recipe makes four hoagie rolls. Start by pouring one cup of warm milk into a medium bowl. Sprinkle on two tablespoons of yeast. This is called proofing, and while it's not necessary for the cooking process, this ensures your yeast is healthy. It should froth up within five to 10 minutes, as seen in this sped up video. Now add the salt, sugar, oil, and melted butter. Stir to combine and add two cups of bread flour. Mix thoroughly and then combine with your hands in the bowl for another three to five minutes. It should come together and be pretty sticky, but not sloppy. It helps to rinse your hands to get a better feel for the texture. If it feels runny or like wet oatmeal, work in more flour a half tablespoon at a time. The goal here is to get a sticky ball that is just together enough to pick it up as a whole. The main thing you want to avoid is a powdery dry dough ball. Lightly flour a clean surface and knead the dough briefly for about another three to five minutes. It should come together a little more, but still remain soft and a little sticky. Now create a dough ball. I do this by spinning it around in my hands while folding it towards the center from underneath. Now put a cap of oil into your bowl and place the dough ball inside, coating the ball and the sides of the bowl with oil. Finally, cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let it rest for two hours. It will double in size as shown in this sped up footage. While your dough is rising, take a piece of parchment paper and cover a baking pan. After two hours, remove the plastic wrap and push the air out of the dough. Shape it into a round, even ball. Then cut it into four even pieces, which will become four hoagie rolls. Lightly flour a clean surface and put your first quarter dough ball on top. First, I push outward from the center with my fingers. The goal here is to flatten it into a square or rectangle that is evenly thick from edge to edge. At this point, the size isn't really as important as concentrating on making it even. As a general rule though, mine usually come out to be about six inches across. But I can tell you from experience that you don't need perfection to achieve good results. Once you have a rectangle, roll the dough tightly from top to bottom. I'm assuming this is why they are called rolls. 
As you come to the seam, pinch the edges together to seal it shut. Don't go too gentle here as you want a good seal. The first time I made hoagie rolls, several unraveled because I didn't pinch the seam well enough. Now, roll the log back and forth while gently pushing outwards. The goal is to make a roll that is about 8 to 10 inches with even thickness. If one area is thicker than normal, you can focus on working out just that side, but honestly, don't obsess over it. Place the roll onto the pan that you've prepared with parchment paper. Now repeat this process for the other three. When placing the rolls on your pan, it helps to ensure a good seal by placing the seam side down. Next, cover with a dish towel and let them rise for 30 minutes, preferably not too close to your oven. If they sit too long, especially in a humid environment, they may go flat. While your rolls are rising, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. To prepare an egg wash, mix one egg with one tablespoon of water. This step isn't required, and if you don't have an egg, you can substitute milk. After 30 minutes, uncover the rolls, and they will be nice and fluffy. Gently apply the egg wash. If you don't have a brush, you can also use a paper towel. A light coating will give them a nice golden appearance. Immediately put the rolls into your preheated oven and set your timer for 30 minutes. I like to toss a couple of ice cubes into the bottom of the oven. This isn't required, but the steam will improve the rise and overall texture. Within about 30 minutes, remove your rolls when they look golden brown. And finally, place them onto a cooling rack. Because there are so many opinions out there, I want to start with a brief explanation as to how I arrived at this oil recipe. The common thread I found in my research was that the oil is light, sweet, and salty, but contains no vinegar. I confirmed from photos and former employees that there were no visible spices in the oil itself. The spice you see on a whammy is oregano, which is applied with a shaker before serving. From here, two main theories diverge, both attempting to answer the question of why the secrecy? The first theory is that the oil is just really simple. I'm talking oil and salt, as well as sugar and possibly even honey. But the tastiest conspiracy theory is that the secret ingredient is a cheap light beer. Of the people I talked to closest to the source, there was more disagreement about the type of light beer than if it was included. Also, there's a certain appeal to the conspiracy that the reason it was made in a locked basement is that they've been secretly getting teenagers drunk on hoagies since the 1950s. Okay, let's go. You'll need vegetable oil, salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. One close to the source opinion was confident the original recipe didn't include garlic, but in my taste test, the addition of garlic powder significantly adds to the flavor. Finally, light beer. I honestly found very little difference in the choice of light beer, but personally I leaned towards PBR because the beer flavor was slightly more present. My anti-garlic source was equally adamant that the original recipe used Coors Light, which honestly does make sense if your goal is to avoid any signs of actual beer. First, measure out a fourth cup of light beer and pour it into a mixing container. Next, measure out a fourth cup of vegetable oil. For the most basic oil, you could stop here, but I suggest the addition of a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Then just give it a quick stir. You can use more to taste, but I recommend starting with half teaspoons, especially if you are preparing this ahead of time, as the flavor will get stronger as it sits. For a beer-free oil recipe and more ideas, I've added my favorite alternatives at the end of this video. Prep isn't just something TV chefs do for time. Preparing ahead of time for your home meals will save you time and result in less mistakes. We'll start with the head of lettuce. The easiest way to remove the core is to locate the stem 
and give it a few hard knocks against a flat surface. Now grab the entire core and with a little effort it should twist right out. Next, slice the head in half. To achieve the Noki's grass style, cut long thin strips down along the edge. And set aside into a container. Next, slice a tomato and place it into a container. To prep the roll, cut down the side about halfway and then gently pull it apart without tearing it in half. The fresher your hoagie roll, the easier this is to do. You'll want two slices of American cheese per whammy. I suggest buying American cheese from the deli. Cheap American cheese is more oil than actual cheese. Deli sliced American cheese or a better brand like Boar's Head will melt and taste significantly better. Next, take a pound of burger and cut it into fourths. Each quarter makes one whammy. Now, pre-shape your patty on a piece of parchment paper or wax paper. Using a spatula, push the burger flat. A silicone spatula makes it a little easier to spread and shape. The goal is to create an even rectangle that is about the same length as your hoagie roll. Cut the paper to size. I recommend cooling the burger in your fridge for at least a few minutes. This solidifies the shape and helps prevent this from happening. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to whammy! Before you do anything else, preheat your pan to medium-high heat. Personally, I like to pre-oil my pan, and if you have a cast iron, use it. Cast iron adds iron to your diet, but more importantly provides a very hot surface that cooks evenly and sears quickly, resulting in a juicy burger. While the pan is preheating, set out all of the pieces to your whammy puzzle. The whammy is thin and cooks fast. Don't ruin it running around your kitchen. Next, quickly flip the patty onto your hot pan. Feel free to use whatever type of burger and spices you prefer. I don't eat meat, so you may be surprised that this is actually an impossible burger. Within a couple minutes, as soon as you see browning, carefully flip the burger and immediately place the American cheese. I use a tiny amount of water in my pan and cover to quickly steam melt the cheese. After about one to two minutes, remove the lid. Cut the burger lengthwise down the center. And stack the slices on top of each other. Now take your hoagie roll and place the patty stack along the edge. Insert tomato slices and sprinkle liberally with grass. Mix the oil and lightly apply across the top about three to five teaspoons, enough to soak the lettuce without saturating the roll. Finally, sprinkle with oregano. Cut and serve. Mmm, whammy. A decent beer-free option is the addition of dry malt powder, also known as malted barley flour or diastatic malt. This is a secret ingredient for some bread makers and something Noki's may have had on hand, but it's an interesting option because it's also used in beer making. For this I recommend using a half cup of canola oil rather than vegetable oil as vegetable oil can somewhat overpower the malt flavor. Next, add a half teaspoon of salt a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of garlic, and one teaspoon of diastatic malt powder. The first thing you'll notice is that it's quite sweet. I recommend letting it sit for at least an hour for the flavor to develop. Next, let's look at some additional options. I recommend starting with a half teaspoon of any spice you add. The recipe I found to be the most simple and flavorful was vegetable oil, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and light beer. 
While the gnocchi's original recipe is devoid of dark spices, I tested oregano and basil and found it added flavor quite a bit. Alternatively, a generic Italian spice mix performed above average in my blind taste tests. Adding black pepper is a nice addition as well, even just as a sprinkle on the final whammy. You can find diastatic malt powder online or at a local brewer supply store and occasionally a baking aisle. Canola oil is more bland than vegetable oil, but for that reason is more of a blank slate if you don't like the flavor of vegetable oil. Olive oil can have a more overpowering flavor, but is a healthier choice for anyone trying to avoid refined oils and trans fats. And finally, the most controversial ingredient, accent seasoning, also known as MSG. I use it because modern research does not substantiate the negative claims that are more likely rooted in racism than science. Yes, it probably will make you want to eat more, but that's because it makes your food taste better. Humans have five basic taste senses, sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and umami. MSG provides umami in a way that other spices can't replicate. It's simply a combination of sugar and salt and occurs naturally in foods like tomatoes, seaweed, and cheese. I use it and I recommend others look into it as well. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, which will help me monetize my videos in the future.